Today, I am back on one of my favorite airlines, EVA Airways, as I fly a relatively short hop in business class from Taipei's Taoyuan Airport to Singapore's Changi Airport. After an amazing experience on board Starlux just a few days prior, I was eager to get on board to see if EVA was as good as I remembered. After spending a few days in Taipei with good friends catching Pokemon planes and eating delicious Asian food, we packed up our bags and departed our hotel in the early hours, bound for Taoyuan International Airport. There was no delay for check-in at EVA's priority counters, and since we still had some time, we went to the observation deck to do a bit of last-minute plane spotting. After seeing the Pokemon plane one last time, we headed through security and immigration, where we caught another special plane, EVA's Hello Kitty jet, Sanrio characters pushing back for departure. Afterwards, we found a spot by the food court and grabbed a quick drink at Starbucks. Since we were flying with a friend who didn't have lounge access, we opted to skip it since we had already been there before. If you're curious about the lounge, check out my previous EVA video. Our aircraft for today's flight is a Boeing 777-300ER, registration Bravo 16703, an older jet having been flying for 18 years. This particular plane is one of EVA's earliest 777s, but most notably it used to wear the Hello Kitty Sanrio family livery, before being repainted in 2021. Boarding began on time and business class passengers were part of Zone 1 for boarding. EVA Air's business class cabin on the 777 is configured in a 1-2-1 reverse herringbone layout, featuring 10 rows of seats across two cabins, with a total of 39 seats. I was seated in the smaller rear business class cabin in seat 9A. The seats are upholstered in a dark forest green and a light grey, a more conservative colour scheme which still feels comfortable and welcoming. EVA does have a newer cabin look with a lighter green, but I think this darker one is a bit classier. As I settled in, a flight attendant came around to deliver a wet towel and the welcome drink, a healthy fruit concoction that matched the color of the seat, and tasted good as well. She also introduced herself and welcomed me on board, handing out the menus and confirmed my meal choices and post-departure drinks. Let's show you around the features of the seat. The TV screen swings out with the press of this button. It looks a bit dated and the screen quality leaves a bit to be desired. Underneath, way in front is the footrest, offering tons of legroom to stretch out. These reverse herringbone seats are perfect for taller passengers. To the left are some storage pockets for things like blankets or larger personal items. The side table swings out easily by pulling on this flap and can be flipped open for a generously sized surface area for working or eating. It's very sturdy as well. You'll find the seat controls just above the armrest. On the side console, you'll find the IFE controller, adjustable reading lamp, universal power outlet, headphone jack, as well as some more storage and a bottle holder. The headrest is adjustable up or down, and you can fold the sides in for neck support while sleeping. The seats also come with a large pillow. The armrests along the aisle can be raised by pressing this button. Note that they must be in the down position for takeoff and landing. 
The literature pocket is situated near the outside of the seat along the bottom, containing the safety card and the sickness bag. You'll also find a coat hook here as well toward the top. Here's the wing and engine view from seat 9A. It's perfect if you ask me. At the front of the cabin is a painting of Hello Kitty, most likely as an homage to the plane since it used to wear the Hello Kitty livery. It wasn't a full flight as there were still a few empty seats after boarding was complete. As the safety video started playing, we began pushing back for departure. As we climb to cruising altitude, let's take a look at some of the amenities. Here are the slippers provided by EVA. They're very comfortable and are perfect for washroom breaks. Here are the noise-canceling headphones called Thunder. Not sure if that's just an EVA brand or an actual headphone brand. They were quite comfortable and sounded great. However, the IFE in comparison was quite dated and really needed a refresh. The screen itself lacked contrast and brightness and was a bit hard to use, especially with the input lag. There wasn't a ton of movie selection either, so I just left it on the flight map for the entire flight, which unsurprisingly was also the retro style flight map. As the meal service is about to start, let's take a look at the menu. Note that you can also pre-order some more exclusive meals ahead of the flight as well. Feel free to pause the video to read in more detail or use the chapters below to skip ahead to the meal service.
To kick things off, I got a bowl of rice crackers and ordered both mocktails from the menu, the Amber Dream and Sonata in the Sky, which I really enjoyed. The appetizer was a refreshing plate of tea smoked duck with marinated shrimp and tea plum. Garlic bread was served on the side. For my main, I selected the beef filet, which I thought was cooked nicely, still soft and juicy on the inside. During the main course, the crew came around to hand out more bread, which I could not say no to since the butter was so delicious. Finally, for dessert, there was a fruit platter, as well as a dialing black tea flavored chestnut tart. I liked that it wasn't overly sweet. It was complemented nicely with a coffee. service, I checked out the lavatories. I went to the one just in front of the L2 door, which was especially large. The amenities were by 4711, Aqua Colonia line, which included facial mist, hand wash, aroma mist, and body lotion. Afterwards, I closed my eyes for a bit and relaxed for the rest of the flight. As we started our descent into Singapore, the crew handed out some candy as they concluded their service. Due to stormy weather, we stayed in a holding pattern for quite a while before finally setting up for final approach into Singapore. Even as we touched down, the rain was pouring heavily, as you can tell by the water kicked up by the reverse thrust and the waterfall effect on the windows. And that concludes my short flight with EVA. One thing I love about EVA is how consistent their service and product is, and that was evident on this flight as well. The reverse herringbone seat is very comfortable and private enough for an intra-Asia flight like this one, and the crew were very polished and efficient. 
One question many people ask is, who is better, EVA or Starlux? Having flown both within a few days of each other, I can say that they're both very compelling products, but it's hard to say one is obviously better than the other. Starlux offering feels fresh and trendy with beautiful cabins and seats, supported by an energetic crew, while EVA offers understated luxury and has proven consistency and polish over the years. Sure, the IFE was a bit disappointing on this flight, but it's not fair to compare an 18 year old 777 to a brand new A330. Let's just say you can't go wrong with either Starlux or EVA. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like or a comment and consider subscribing for more aviation content. I've also started up a Patreon page, so if you're looking to get more insights and behind the scenes of my travels while helping to support the channel, you can check it out in the description below. And with that, thanks for watching, happy travels, and I'll see you in the next one.